Well, I think if I had a dollar for every lap you've done around a speedway, Bernie, I'd be a reasonably wealthy guy. You'd probably be wealthier than I am. <laughs> That's <laughs> why you've done so many laps, because you don't. Yeah. You must still love it after all these years. Oh, yeah, I, I love it, but it's I'm starting to get a bit tired of it. So, but we'll keep going as long as I still enjoy it, I suppose. Feature race win tonight would change that. Oh, definitely might give me another year. <laughs> How traditionally do you go around this place? Uh, always lately in the top three or four, won the last feature here. So um, that I was in, yeah, so that was, that was good. And your boy's been coming along since carts and then moving into different forms of speedway into this now with you. How long has it been racing together as a two-car deal? Oh, we raced last year as a two-car, only once, just down here at Sydney. Um, you're just trying to find the time to do it and Simon with his work and all the rest of it very hard, but um, we'll try and do it as much as we can in the future. Why Super Sedans, Bernie? You've been very loyal to this category for well over two decades. When I was a little kid, around five years ago, when I was eight, I, um, I loved minis. So I started racing a mini in 1976 and uh, went from minis through Rovers, two Rovers, and then into um, the Chevs so, and the Commodores and, and what have you. So, um, yeah, I just love sedans. I like, like looking, the look of the cars, and um, always been a sedan man. No, ever, um, never had an a inkling to get in an open wheel car, even though Simon had a speed car, I could have got in that. But no, just I like, like sedans, nice and safe. Simon, what's your earliest recollection of Dad's racing? Uh, well, probably when I was a kid. I, th I think I was raised on the hill at Newcastle Speedway, so um, probably there before I'd even remembered. But yeah, I, I remember Dad running the Rover back in the day. And uh, yeah, I used to have my own matchbox car Rover, painted up, same as Dad's, and I used to drive around the land room floor. But yeah, it was started very early for me. There must be a massive sacrifice that Dad's made to put two cars on the racetrack. They're not a, an inexpensive form of motor racing and a big effort. Oh, definitely, yeah. It take, takes a lot. Luckily, he's got a lot of good guys that help us out and um, make it all happen. And um, yeah, he's been fortunate enough to, to have been in a position to, to have two cars for us. So, yeah, it's been really, really good. What do you love about racing sedans, Simon? Um, well, I like it because it costs me less money than to race my own car, but that's, that's probably the... Thanks, Dad. <laughs> yeah, that's the main reason, but yeah, I've grew up around them. Obviously, go back to the heyday in Newcastle, you know, like seeing Dad race, all, all the yeah. Pine Boys and all that sort of stuff. We just grew up, like, uh, yeah, just watching it, and uh, yeah, just the love grew from there, so... I'm praying that this is a Movember look. I'm praying that you don't normally look like oh, come this. Come on, don't, don't you like it? <laughs> nah. What do you think? Well, he, he can do it, but I certainly won't because if, if ever I try to do it, I'll be grey and I don't like that grey hair on my face. What's the result for tonight? What's your plan, Simon? Uh, well, I would just try for the best result. Obviously, I go out to win every time, um, and, and that's what I'll be doing tonight. So, um, look, a podium would be nice. Um, I'd be happy with that. But, yeah, um, there's some good quality guys here tonight, so we'll just give it our best shot and see how we go. Well, John Brown, if I had a dollar, I just said to Bernie, for every lap he'd done, I'd be wealthy. And I reckon I'd have a few bucks if I was the same way with you. Probably so would I if I had that much money too. But if you hadn't done the laps, you'd have the money. Oh, definitely. But you know, you've got to have the fun. You've got to be able to stay on there and keep enjoying it. And as you enjoy it, you keep wanting to do it. John, you've always been a gasser. I've always enjoyed commentating your racing because you never leave the pedal off the floor. I always like the high line. If the track's good up there, yeah, you go fast. Simple as that. Everyone else wants a low line, you've got to go to the top. So. You haven't raced very much in the last 12 months. Uh, I'm getting old, you know. I was just going to sort of have a little bit of a rest, but no, business commitments, that sort of thing. So I've sort of hung off a little bit, but I'm starting to get going again. I've got a late model in the Super Sedan, so, you know, in the future we'll get, get back in there. Why is your heart still in Super Sedans? Uh, well, it was something we developed back in Newcastle years ago, and it, to me the concept was really good. It's getting out of hand again now, but the concept was good to keep the small guy in and still be able to spend the money and the big guy win but you know as all motorsport does the big guy gets in and then we sort of drift away from it but you know definitely yeah. you cut your teeth on the Newcastle Speedway which is a very tight was a very tight D shape with a concrete wall either side compared to this place which is a more flowing circuit which do you prefer I actually like the walls because the walls you can't run off the track and use something that's not there but Parramatta's always been a place where it's got so much drive you get to use your horsepower most times it's, it's good clean racing, you know, where Newcastle was just one of them tracks that had a high line and if you didn't use it, you didn't go forward, simple as that. Are super sedans the kind of car that you've got to keep your revs up and, and really keep them on the limit or are they a stab and steer kind of car? 
Nah, there's a lot of technology goes into it these days. The old days it was sort of stab and steer, but now you've got to be on the mark. It's like any form, sprint car, whatever. If you haven't got it right, you're totally wrong. So, But, yeah, a lot of technology. I've got to tame down to, to come to the technology, which is hard, but that's the way it works, and that's why you've got to do it. Don't tame down, John. Well, it's not so much tame down your driving. You've just got to tone your driving skills a little different, you know. The horsepower of today, we're, we're all up in 700-odd horsepower. The old days, we had 500 horsepower, and you had to do what you could with it. Now, you've got the horsepower, so you've got to tame your throttle speed down a little bit. That's all. All right, let's get after it, boys. Super Sedan, main event time. John Brown alongside Lyle Harris. And go back to that very cool looking 57 car that has been right in the thick of things too. There's a couple of guys we haven't seen much of here before, but hasn't slowed them down. They have been really on the money. 57 car of Paul Granitidis. Granitis as we go green, there's trouble here. And straight into it, Granitis in the Paragon Cafe entry, and Harris in the Dodge. So hmm. that didn't take long at all. No. Lights are out, 15 laps ahead of us, not the 20, that makes a little bit more sense. Brown on the pole alongside Tony Barklemore. Barkles and Brownie into one and two, and Tony gets the cushion as the Harris car goes around. The more inexperienced guys are gonna struggle around this place because of those slick conditions. We go yellow. And we're going to come back to yellow. Whoops. Harris. That could be a worry. In the 88. So Barclamore and Brown back on the front row. We get after it now. If we can just get the first lap in, that's generally what's critical. Once you get the first lap in, things generally get a bit of a race flow and everyone settles down. Granitis on the outside of Bernie Roberts. Barclamore, your leader. I think Robert Carrick's been the most lively, but wow, did you see Dick come in then? Yeah, he did. He just contacted him. Granitis has spun. Turn three and four. Man, we're going to go yellow again. So, yellow situation with Granitis in that Goulburn region. Turn yourself on. Maybe Pete's turned you off because to make sure you wouldn't say anything back. Yeah, or say anything. Yeah, yeah those are out. Yeah, there you go. Back to racing, guys. Come on. <laughs> Here we go. There's Back underway. <laughs> Barkamore gets the jump into turn one. On the top side, driving away from Brown, coming out of turn two. Simon Roberts up on the top side, trying to work with Carrig. Oh, Simon. Oh. Simon! And around they go. Simon says no. And this is a little bit bordering on the farcical. So a yellow again. Disappointing. And hence Simon's now at the back of the bus and the Carline Muffler is number 22. We're back underway. Is anybody going to do anything with Barclamore? If we get a lap in, we might find out. Look how straight John Brown's driving that car on the low side, Toby. Yeah, exactly right, Wade. Uh, Barkamore's around the top, but I think the bottom's coming in here. If the, the guys can hold it down low and really keep the car straight as we see another car jump the cushion. Looks like Barkamore's persisting with the top, but I think if you jump around the bottom and, uh, and hold the car straight, I think there's a bit of a run there. Yeah, that was Robert Carrick in three and four that banged the cushion and unsettled the car big time. Now look at him back on the outside of white as they come off the turn. Everybody's doing it, John Brown as well. And the Cave Speech Automotive entry allows the, the door to be kicked through by Bernie Roberts. And if you're sideways down the bottom, you got no hope at all. And look at Barclamore stepping lively out in front in the Parks Toyota car. Bernie Roberts still in second. John Brown third, fourth is Wayne Dick. Just what? Sorry, Wade. Just watching Bernie Roberts through three and four last time. He went way above the cushion, trying to try something different on the racetrack, and it didn't work for him. So he's now gone back underneath that cushion and just trying to railroad around on the cushion. They're not exactly the most nimble of race cars. We have Super Sedans. They're quite a big, heavy, cumbersome vehicle. So you really, when you put them into a corner, you got to be committed to where you're going. And full credit to Bernie for trying it out. He'll know now, though. He's really got to just stay on the cush or drop to the bottom and try and keep the car straight. But I think 
Barclamore's really got this track worked out at the moment, Toby. Yeah, definitely. But I, I think, honestly, with the bottom, it doesn't seem like anyone's uh, picking it up. But uh, I think Brown, he was on the bottom before, but he didn't hold it there. Uh, Barclamore, though, he's doing a good job. He's driving out in front. Why would you change anything if you're driving away? Yeah, totally. You see that Brown's under some pressure again from Wayne Dick in the Lithgow self-storage. Number seven. Wow, side by side off the turn. Here comes Wayne in the number seven. Laps are getting by. There's only six laps remaining for your leader, Tony Barclamore. But look at this. On the bottom. Well, he got him. Yeah, Brown just got that car, just got a little sideways on him and that let Dick to get through. Simon Roberts scudding back as well, Toby. And notice he's got the car a lot straighter now. Yeah, and trust me, he knows how to drive a race car. I've seen him in go-karts and he definitely knows what he's doing. So uh, just goes to show the caliber of drivers that are out here tonight. And, Woo, he got Brownie. He's working at top side. Pretty handy in a speed car too when he ran the, in that uh, category. Yeah, he was. Oh, oh, no. Oh, we've done it, Wado. We just wrapped him up. It was all uh, Wado. Uh, you you oh, wrapped Wade. him up, Wado. You wrapped it him up. It wasn't us. <laughs> Good work, Tobe, sticking together. Love your work. <laughs> We're staying green at the moment, which surprises me a bit. But the guy just want to get this one in. So maybe the official's declaring that he's sort of out of harm's way. We have three and a half laps to go. Barkenwell's driving away with this one. Yeah, smart drive. He's been very quick all night and doing a good job here. I'm really surprised Carrick hasn't done anything in this feature, boys, because he was fast in those heat races, as was Barkenmore, and he's doing a nice job out in front. Lap 14 of 15, only a couple laps to go. Bernie Roberts running a pretty solid line, but Barkenmore, now you see Brown and Carrick, just John Brown, it has not been his night, but he's, the last time he drove this car was the last time they raced here last year. So he hasn't had a whole lot of seat time. Last lap for Barkamore. Yeah. On the bottom. Superb drive from him. He's coming up into turn three while Bernie Roberts is half a lap behind him. Bernie has been solid tonight. He's tried hard and Wayne Dick has done a good job for third. Checkered flag is out. Tony Barkamore gets the win. Put your hands, get it for him. In trying conditions, he will hold on. Second will be Bernie Roberts. Third is Wayne Dick. Fourth will be Brown. He gets Carrick back. Good job, John Brown over Robert Carrick. Back to Lyle Harris. And then back to White, I think it was, in the 23N for American Racing Tires. That's your Super Sedan A Main. Unsurpassed protection for today's hotter running higher compression engines. Valvoline with next-gen technology. Made with 50% recycled motor oil. Finally, performance meets environment. We'll make a tree hugger out of you yet.